Roman, the 10th chapter. The time is not now, y'all. It is critical time in his life now. And it don't make sense for us to keep coming to him in our natural man. The Bible tells us so much in his word and we ignore it. And we pass by what God is trying to tell us all the time. And we keep missing his warning and warnings and warnings and warnings. And we seem to want to do it our own way. But this scripture read right here, this is not what I'm going to read, but I just want to read it to you. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. He didn't say come to church again. He didn't say sing again. And we still coming in here like we don't understand what God is asking for. We constantly bringing our flesh in God's house. He know we house it. He know we walk around in the flesh. But he tell us we must be born again. That's what it said. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that was born of the spirit is spirit. And what we brought in here this morning was flesh. Romans the 10th chapter beginning at the first verse. Brethren, my heart desires and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to every man that believe. O oh, Heavenly Father in Jesus. God, have your way. These are your people, God. You just called me to be a sportsman over your people. But God, you do something with them. I'm going to just obey what you tell me to do as you've been continuing to tell me to do. God, whatever way you want to get their attention, you do it. Because evidently, God, that which is flesh is flesh. And that which is spirit in him is spirit. God, send your anointing in this place. God, let us not go into the next year carrying the same, same, same nasty thing, us, into your presence. God, we need you right now, God. What well, I need you, God. Because I don't want to preach in my flesh or think in my flesh. God, send your anointing inside to anoint me more, God, that I can do the things that you desire for me to do. I don't want to have that spirit of Moses to get weary with the people, God. But God, with your power, I don't have to worry about that. God, do it right now. And God, I'm going to ask of you right now, God. You know where Prophet the Lens is at. And I'm asking you to turn around now, God. I'm not asking you to do it for the, with the doctors. I'm not, whatever way you want to do it, but I'm asking you to, to make a difference right now. Increase everything about her right now, God. Stop the uh, uh, vomiting and all this stuff, God. Give her strength, God. Give her your strength, God. And God, we forever get to pray, God, make it happen. Make it happen right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we forget we get to pray, we get to thanks. Because you said if you be lifted up from the earth, you'll draw all men. God, that's all I've been lifting up is you. Draw them, God, in the name of Jesus. And every man can say amen. 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 And you can have your seed. 
We thank God for being God all by itself. So many times, uh, so many things are going on now that uh, that we are seeing, and and we know Christmas just 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 ended, and and now we looking for the New Year, and and I want Cornerstone to not wait till New Year to make nothing for God, because the day you got saved, you should have made a New Year resolution then. And now we got to come back to this year, and you got to start telling God what you're going to do this year. If you were saved, you wouldn't have to have no New Year's resolution. Your mind will be made up. Your heart will be fixed. But we, we keep coming in here and hearing God's word. And I said, I think it's so befitting for what God got for you all today. And, and I want to bring it the way God want me to bring it because... Matthew 1 and 21 said, you don't have to turn now. Just let, let me break this down. It said, and she shall bring forth a son. Y'all know she brought forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And now we call his name Jesus for only when we want something from him. That name don't mean nothing to us when we doing the things we want to do. When we walking in sin, when we going against God's word. That name don't mean nothing unless we teaching or we preaching. He said, they shall call the name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Why we keep sinning? Why we still in sin and say we love God? He come back in Matthew 1 and 23. He said, behold, he said, look, a virgin shall bring forth a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call the name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God with us. And here we have got God don't sit down a Savior and tell you that his name is Emmanuel and he should be with us and we still do everything with him with us. We still go against the name of Jesus because somebody else don't believe. I don't understand it, but I know what he wants me to do and I, I don't have no problem with doing it. That people are not delivered from the penalty of sin. So many times, because God died for sin, we think we got away from the penalty. Did y'all hear what I said? That people are not delivered from the penalty of sin. He died for sin, but you're not delivered from the penalty of sin. You know, and God is still trying to tell us what he expects and what he is. And so many times as believers, God keep bringing this back to me that ye are the salt of the earth. This is what we should be. Should nobody ever should have to tell a bunch of believers to sit down for saying God's word. That means some in the choir is filthy. That means over the holidays, y'all don't got filthy with our mind. We don't thought about Christmas. We don't thought about other people. They said, what do the lonely do in Christmas? What have y'all been doing in Christmas? It's supposed to have been celebrating God. Most people ain't having church. We you know why? Because they ain't salty. They ain't the light of the world. And we coming in here with our nasty flesh after he was birthed. And we tell him we glorify him, but we ain't. We don't enjoy giving gifts, and God sent a message to tell you about your giving and your giving. And nobody had came to say, I'm going to glorify God today. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to walk right. I'm going to talk right. Instead, we going right into the new year with that same flair. He said, you are the salt of the earth. Where you salt at? Where do y'all salt at? Do you have to hum? Do you have to churn? Who? Who is salt? Everybody got their own mind. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savior, have y'all lost it? Have y'all lost y'all savior? Have y'all became sweet? Or have you became bitter? What's in you? What's in you? God said you must be born again. That means you should be pure. That means you, people should be able to tell that you are saved. They should have had Christmas, Christmas by looking at you. It's a shame, y'all. It's a shame. And y'all gonna do the same thing when y'all leave here today. Nothing. 
This is what he said. He said, have lost his Savior. Where shall it be sought? Where y'all sought there? Hmm? Where your light at? Where your light at? And I know everybody said, oh, it wasn't me having a problem with the, with the choir. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. And most of y'all, I told you last week, you're going to go around your family and, and you're going to shine no light. How did y'all shine in the light? That's why you're dragging him this morning from yesterday. All the fool y'all been in, you I probably ain't thought about Jesus at all. This is a soul-saving church. And that's why you don't understand. That's why your family don't understand. That's why your friends don't understand. Because they go to church. That's not a soul-saving ministry. They go to church where it's church as usual. We're trying to save souls that other people can come to the floor by saying, man, you salty, man. Boy, you put a taste in my mouth. Man, watching you, you is a light to me, man. I don't be in the church. I don't see people in church. They don't look like you. And then he come back in Luke 16 and 13. He said, no servant can serve two masters. And how y'all go from church and then go home and serve somebody else? How do y'all go to work and scared to talk to people at your job that say they saved? And you know they ain't living right. That ain't, that ain't salty. And y'all come here and first be ready to condemn each other in him or convict each other in him. But people sitting right on your job that you know ain't saved or in your family that you know ain't saved and you put the salt up in your life. That's what he said. He's talking to us. And Paul was telling uh, uh, the Romans, said, brother, my heart desire and prayer to God is that Israel be saved. And y'all remember I preached the mess one time, brother, my heart desire and prayer to God is that the world be saved. And everybody act like I preach the, the wrong gospel. But all that I preach is out the scripture. So that means if I'm coming out the scripture, what you say you believe in, you say that, so it must be some confliction now. Huh? And when y'all get bothered, it got to be y'all don't agree with what I say. What he said, God is really trying to pay and get cornerstone to real, realize one thing. This is what this ministry is about. And so many people find time to always make it look like I'm a devil or a demon. They're always trying to say he's too harsh. He, he's too direct. He, he said things he shouldn't say. But here Paul said, brother, my heart desire in prayer. My heart desire in prayer for this world and the Pensacola and all these churches to get it right the way God wanted and be the salt of the earth and a light that people unsaved can, can realize, man, you know they got it. But everybody's trying to act like the church ain't got it. But tell me why God keep us strong. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why we ain't whining and this and that. Tell me why. God dealt with me this morning and told me, son, my message today, and I pray that y'all put it in the heart to be able to know who Apostle Simmons is and that you won't let your mammy, your family, and nobody, even yourself, talk about who he is. That's what God told me this morning. My preaching is a soul-saving message. It's not, it's not to be your friend. It's not to make you all right. It's not to make y'all comfortable. I don't care if you pay time. Take your time and stick it up on your butt. God wants your soul to be saved. He wants your spirit to live, be like his spirit. And we sit at home and think we all right. We sit at home and we make decisions that ain't even God. We don't even put God in our decision making. He said, my preaching, Apostle Simon preaching, it's a soul-saving message. What y'all gonna say? What y'all gonna say? Soul-saving.
the act of saving the soul. That's why all the message y'all hear here, it's a soul saving message. This is what it said. This is what it said. He said, soul saving, the act of saving soul is special upon a mission work. It's not just to come in here and make it all right. In 1 Corinthians 9 and 22, it, it was Paul was telling the Corinthian church, to the weak I became weak. He was telling you, to the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. That ain't mean I'm going to get weak for them. I became weak and understood where they were. I humbled myself. This is what he said. This is what Paul was telling him. Paul said, to the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. But when you're not ready for a soul-saving mission, it makes you renege because a soul-saving mission, mission is trying to get you back to God. It's not trying to make you be a member of their church. He said, he said, look what he said. He said, I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. If this is all I can say, that's all he got. Because one thing about y'all, save me being different. Save me getting rid of your old man. Save me and get rid of your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Brother, my heart is out. And prayer to God is that the world be saved. So when he want that to happen, he got to bring a message that if a soul saved. God has summons you. God has summons you to get right with him. And y'all heard that message, but you ain't changed. That's what I'm telling you. It's a soul-saving message. Merry Christmas to y'all. Because y'all going to the next Christmas, if you make it, doing the same thing you did last year. You ain't got to wait till the new year. You're still sad because you're man. You're still sad because you ain't got no money in the bank. You're sad because... Your husband ain't right, or your wife ain't bad. You sad, but you ain't sad because you don't know Jesus. You're sad by everything that's no good. Y'all bought about everything, and here God said, I died for you. And y'all ain't got no life in you yet, and he died for your little nasty self. And y'all still glorifying everything but God. He's choking us. And we don't want to hear it. He said, tell my message, your message, is a soul-saving message. It ain't to make you all right. It ain't to let you come in the church pat and be comfortable. He don't want you comfortable. And you're going to go to hell off of everything you heard. Because in, to you, you think you ain't got to do it now. He's tired, y'all. You're young, he's tired. Tell everybody, you can put a deaf ear to me all you want. I'm going to do what he tell me, and then when it, right, when it walk up on you, when death walk up on you, you say one thing. Apostle told me something one time, and I didn't listen. Now I'm telling you something again, and you ain't got to listen. He said, my preaching. That's why everybody bought it. That's why I don't nobody want me to preach nowhere. That's why y'all don't be excited about coming to church, because you know one thing, flesh is flesh. That's what he said. He said, who or what is keeping you from doing what God wants you to do? Talk, come on, Cornerstone, talk to me. God sent this out the criminal. What is keeping you from doing what he has called you to do? Got to be your flesh. And we come in here and we sit in here word and we say, well, I ain't in sin. I ain't doing nothing wrong. But if you ain't doing what God wants, you in sin. Because that's disobedience. My preaching is for a soul-saving ministry. It to change you. I know it changed me. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. It's what it said. Who or what is keeping you from doing what God wants you to do? And that means anything. When you hear God's word, you ought to shift from that. But y'all know what we do? We hear God's word and we make our own decision. Yeah. I ain't gonna do I ain't ready to mess with that yet. 
He said, a day that you hear my voice. And a lot of y'all have heard stuff of me and still, here we're going to 21 and 22, and still we're going to do it our way. That's just like God come down and tell me, Terry, this is what I want you to preach this morning. I'm going to say, no, God, I already got what I'm going to preach. But you eat the salt of the earth. This is what he said. He's talking to us because he want to know. He started talking about saved. Delivered from sin and from spiritual death, uh, death when you saved. You delivered from that. He said, reserved from eternal punishment when you saved for real. So all y'all ain't saved for real. Y'all still is, is destined to eternal punishment. I ain't got to tell you about hell since y'all don't want to hear about hell. But hell don't, hell don't stop existing because you, you don't want to hear it. He said, my message, my preaching, is a soul saving. It got all y'all. Why y'all think y'all can go through the COVID and have faith? Because I preach faith to you. That still don't mean you're salty. This is what he said. He's talking to He tell you too. He said, I don't want nothing lukewarm. Only time y'all got some spirit is when you're in the church. I'm preaching this one, y'all. And I, I'm telling you, I, I, everybody, I, I'm telling you what God was telling me. He said, everybody is so bothered about the people that left the church and you be talking about them. He said, well, tell me this, Terry. Let them be honest with you. And when he told me this morning, he said, ask any one of them to allow you to call you and tell you that since I left the ministry, I have grown. Or oh, where have you grown? Don't just say you've grown because you could have grown in weight. I'm talking about in the word of God that when you was him, you was on fire, had a light, was the salt of the earth, didn't take down, didn't do nothing. Now you don't want to convict nobody. You don't want to talk to nobody that's really saved. You want to play church. We ain't playing church no more. That's why I told the choir, sit your little ass and sit down somewhere. Got no time for that. He said, uh, uh, the reserve, he said, worldly. He said, set aside, store, and preserve for later you. Yeah. It's all of us. We sitting here, y'all young people, y'all act like y'all don't know what's going on. When you leave church, you go do your thing. You might be all right with mom and dad, I'm at home. But when you go to school and all that, y'all do y'all. God said, I'm going to punish y'all. God said, I'm going to punish y'all. He said, my preaching is not your friend. My preaching is not your girlfriend or boyfriend. My preaching is a soul-saving preach word. It ain't coming to make it. He said, no, no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Which one y'all love? Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. And most of y'all in him despise the truth. God told me. He said, Terry, I want you to put on all white because that's what you've been preaching. That they be pure. That they be righteous. That they be the salt of the earth. And they still filthy and dirty and beige looking. And y'all gonna do the same thing. You ain't gonna get God now gift for being right with him. I'm talking to us in here. Everybody want to put down, oh, yeah, child. It's just the way he preached, you know, it bothered me. No, it bothered you because you're dirty. This is what he said. He come back and tell him, Lord, hide me from the enemy. Even if the enemy me. That's what y'all said. Y'all heard that word. He said, Lord, hide terror from terror if terror is the enemy. And y'all right now, y'all caring who your enemy is. Y'all caring. He walk with you. He talk with you. He lay down with you. He get up with you. He go to work with you. He come to church with you. And God done sent a soul saving message for you to shift that joke out of your life. And y'all don't want it because y'all know what? Y'all are attracted to filth. Got to mean you used to filth. When you're attracted to it, he said, else he will hold to the one or despise the other. 
you cannot serve God in your own self. They don't go together. It said the spirit and the flesh are contrary. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. You can have the spirit right in you, but if you feed in your flesh, it dominates over the spirit. Not that the spirit don't be telling you right. It's just where you at. Listen to what he said. He said, Lord, hide me from the enemy, even if the enemy me. That's a message I will preach to him. When y'all hide yourself, God said, so say a minute. He will tell you right there, hide me, Lord, from myself. And y'all still walking in self. Then after Christ was born, to come and die for y'all. And y'all know he said, Father, we're finished. So you ain't got to waste the Easter. And he all y'all sitting in here right now. And I know y'all saying, I know what y'all saying. Man, that's just a false. Y'all know how he preach. So you get used to it. You get used to it. He said, that's all right. But when you're standing before me, he might got used to it. And that's why people leave him. Most time when people leave him or they want to do something like that, it's because there's something in them just don't want to do this no more. Because ain't nobody left here can tell me that God told me. Yeah, I'm talking about it again. Yeah, I'm talking about it again. Because God told me you got a soul-saving message. And the people that left him, they walked away from that soul-saving message. That's when I be talking about leaving heaven, going to hell. What you doing? That's what he said. He's telling them that. And then he come back in uh, 1 Peter 1 and 23. He said, being born again, not a corrupted seed. So if y'all mean to tell me y'all still living in corruption, what seed you born of? He's telling us this because he wanted to know. And then you get contaminated by who you around that ain't saved. The people you know that don't know God, don't want to know God, and don't want you around if you're going to be like God, so you change. He said, he said, but uh, incorrupted. By the word of God, which live and abide forever. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. I, I thank God that we had prayer at 5 o'clock in the morning. Man just walk around, sitting around, doing whatever he want to do. Got a chance to experience God for real. But most churches, a lot of churches closed down this morning. Got some closed down with Friday. I mean, but it's supposed to be his birthday. We should have gave him a gift. We should have been worshiping him. We should have been praising him. And then we got one man came on the corner, a white guy. And I'm not present at all, but the white guy came on the corner with all those black men that came out there. And he came out there and I said, I just want to come tell y'all I'm sorry for how I felt about y'all. I've been present all my life. But I want y'all, I just want y'all to know I ain't present no more. Can y'all pray for me? That means that we wouldn't have been in the place we were, and we wouldn't have been the salt of the earth, or we wouldn't have been the light of the world. He could have seen that from Northern Church because everybody in their own house enjoying Christmas. But we gave God a gift yesterday. Y'all ain't got to sit, man. Some of y'all ain't gonna move if I gave you a million dollars. You know, she just ain't got no life in you. He's telling us, he said, Lord, hide me. Hide me from my nasty flesh. Hide me, Lord. Hide me. Hide me from me, God. Hide me from me. I ain't talking about nobody. Hide me from me. Call me or mess me up. Me or mess me up. And I know a lot of y'all, you get mad, but let me tell y'all something. When God tell me to talk to y'all, if you was a been, you been here a year, you know I don't say nothing. Nobody let God tell me to. And when I say it, I really don't care how you feel about it because you ain't going to make me go to hell for disobeying God for your little nasty flesh. You want to go to hell? Hey, go. This is what he said. He's talking about it. He said, look, he come back in Ephesians 2, 8, and, and, and 9. He said, for by grace you are saved. Through faith. Oh, 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 oh. He said, oh, oh, let me read that again. Let me read it again. He said, for by grace you are saved, through faith. And most people say, I'm under grace, but you ain't got no faith. That ain't what that scripture said. That's Ephesians 2 and 8, if you just want to read it. He said, for by grace are you saved, through faith. And that's not of yourself. So many times we want to tell God how we saved. We want to tell God what church we go to. But he said, grace, my grace is sufficient. 
but it only come through faith. That's what he said. He's telling us this. My preaching is a soul-saving message. This ain't kissing cousin message. This ain't trying to get you to get no great offering or no tithe. This ain't no shift. Everybody want to shift. Shift yourself to Jesus. That's all y'all been, everybody I've been hearing all my life. From one leader bounder, from Paula White, from T.D. Jake, everybody talking about shift. Woman died loose and all that and they ain't loose nothing. Y'all ought to tell people to tune in. That's why I tell the Facebook. Shouldn't nobody have to keep telling y'all the, 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 the share no message? What you, what you can't share for? You ain't living it? What's your problem here? Listen to what it said. He come back and tell you, man shall not live by, man shall live by the word of God alone. Ain't no you talking about, I need a steak, I need this. So a man shall live by the word alone. What y'all living by? Well, what y'all really living by? Come on, y'all, talk to me. Don't, don't sit here and act all oh, like y'all be acting like y'all don't know nothing. And then soon the church come out, y'all got more, more, more mouth than a motorcycle got all noise. You just all, you can turn, you can run your mouth like you ain't got, like I ain't never know you can talk. This is what he said. He said, love it thou me more than your family. Do you love me? Do y'all love God more than you love your family? No. I know you'll put God down for your family if they just pay a little attention to you. I'm the salt of the earth. And when I get around everybody, I'm just as sweet. Here we are coming in the church a day after Christmas. After you don't celebrate it. And then I gave you a message last week what he wanted for Christmas. Now I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. You can just go on and lie you want to. Who gave themselves to God for a criminal present? All of your body. Who gave it? I'm going to ask you to show hands. Who gave themselves away? According to his word or according to your According to his word, I told you, look in the word of God. Have you gave yourself to God by the word of God, not by me saying, oh, I'm going to change some things. I'm listening. Have you gave yourself, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God? Is that what he said? That what he said? That what he said? Look what he said. He come back and said, Lord, lovest thou me more than thee? He come back and said, the world, the devil, and the flesh are all against God. So if flesh is flesh and y'all and y'all flesh like the quiet world, you against God. Here y'all here left me hanging. No, I can't blow down, no. So y'all, I had to start out dry because y'all didn't come in with the spirit to encourage the servant. Y'all came in here with y'all little dry, fleshless self, want to put on a show. Won't happen this year. Won't happen this year. I put up with that long enough. He said, for by grace, are you saved through faith? And that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not a work, lest any man should boast. Say, that is the work of God. It's the work of God. Then he come in and say, the world, love not the world, not a thing in the world. Be not conformed to the world. He's told us that if we looked in the mirror. He said, the devil, y'all know he against God. Then he said, your flesh are all against God. So which one you in? I ain't in my flesh, but you in the world. I ain't talking in the world because you, you know y'all will get slick. Say, well, you live in the world too, but I'm not of the world. I got something for you, little bad self. I know how y'all nasty jokers here. Y'all sit up in the church and go against everything God said. But you missed it when he said, it's a war going on, and you better fight. And you know what? It's hard to fight against yourself. It's hard to fight against what you love about you. It's hard to come up against that. That's why most of y'all ain't saved. That's why most of y'all ain't born again. Because you have to knock yourself out. 
and you don't want to knock yourself out because you might hurt yourself because you know that's what you live in all the time. That's what you walk in. It's bad. It's bad, y'all. It's bad that we talked about the issue. We talk about this. We talk about loving each other. And we sit right in the church and still be filthy. It ain't going on this year. And if you want to get mad and feel like this ain't where you want to be, hey, look, E-X-I-T, swing open, usher, open it, walk out. You ain't got no permanent parking place, so just get your car and go. You don't mean nothing. Just, just do what you got to do. It said, God, the man, a chain. Why y'all ain't chained? Paul said, my heart desire and pray is that cornerstone be saved. And everybody, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Even y'all here and all y'all be together talking. Y'all think I don't know. Let me tell y'all something. Don't nothing go on in this church I don't know about it. I know, I know all y'all, all y'all have y'all conversation pad with people. You know, I'm talking about you and him be talking about what I do or how I handle things. Then you talk to who you talk to. Then you talk to who outside the church. Some of y'all still talk to them people outside the church, which I don't bother. I ain't telling nobody to talk to them. You know why? Because I still talk to them and they talk to me. So why would I tell you don't talk to them? Say, God, the man... A chain. Paul began to talk over here about the church. He said in the 10th ten, ten chapter, in the, the first verse, he said, brother. He said, I know y'all think I, I used to be against the church. I, I used to punish the church. I, you, I didn't have an understanding. But if, 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 if everybody was saying, they wouldn't think I was against the church. They wouldn't think I'm, I preach about other churches if they go listen to the 412 messages on them. And y'all ain't telling that I preach to y'all like that. My preaching is a soul-saving message. Tell me, when y'all first came in, y'all ain't come in to be saved. Come on, tell me. Any, any of y'all came in saved? Any of y'all had potential to come here to get saved? No, you were coming to church as usual. Even the one that don't left him. They didn't come here to get saved. We had them coming on crack, cocaine. We had them coming home money. We had liars. We had all kind of stuff that came here. But the word. So all y'all want to do. All y'all want to do is that like y'all get in the spirit. If you're in the spirit, you'll eat this word. This is what it said. He's talking to us. He said, he said, brother, my heart's desire. It got an S on it. My heart's desire. Yeah, Paul was crying out. And every time I'm preaching, and I'm talking about these jokers want to be Q's and Kappa and, and Masons and all that, and preachers. My heart desire that they get saved for real. Then you got jokers talking about, uh, God, there's no... Uh, 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 what is, how, they, how they put it? There is no uh, punishment for sin now. Oh, Child, I don't know who let that nigga in the pool pit. This is what he said. He he's talking. He said he said, brother, my heart desire and my prayer. That what a lot of people say. Man, see that what I'm talking about. I don't like what he how, how he talking stuff like that. No, you don't like because you know it, it makes a lot of sense because you know you around them people. And then let me tell y'all about YouTube, Facebook, and all that. will not y'all just put on y'all Facebook and YouTube. If you want to hear the real truth of the gospel, turn to YouTube. Apostle Terry G. Simmons Sr. Just take you a couple doses. You ain't got to, you ain't got to watch it long. Just take you a couple doses. And then what's so power about it? Let me show you what's so power about it. And y'all can say both of the bragging what you want to. It's 412 mess on there, and you pick the one you want to listen to. And let me tell you about it. They so relevant, they fit the day, even though you listened to one six years ago. Now that's power. Let me tell you why it's power, just in case you don't know. 
I told you what my message is. My preaching is a soul-saving message. So six years, seven years ago, I was still preaching a soul-saving message. It said the word is the same yesterday and the day and forevermore. It changes not. That's what the word said. And it's already selling in heaven. So what I need another gospel for? Y'all tell your preacher, man, you need to start getting some apostle man or start listening to him or something. Because you ain't preaching what he preaching. This is what he said. He's talking to He said, brother, my heart desire. I'm hot. And I ain't hot with I'm a no heat. I'm hot with the enemy playing with y'all mind. Taking y'all soul, dragging y'all through filth and dirt. He don't care nothing about y'all. And then y'all get mad at me because I care for you. Mad with me because I care for your children. Man, I almost broke down and cried yesterday. I, 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 I was walking in the back, and Josh came up to me. Well, y'all, you know, y'all call him time. You know, he act like he's about 80. So he walked up to me, had a little white piece of paper in the hand. And he gave me the paper. He said, Pause. I, no, he said, Granddaddy. Granddaddy, I just want to try to give you something. Now, a lot of y'all got y'all. And work, and I don't give y'all a lie. Y'all ain't show no gratitude. So he walked up to me, and he gave me a little white sheet of paper. And the paper said, Granddad, thank you for being the best granddad that somebody can ask for. Thank you for helping me in my walk, in my life. And thank you for also, uh, Granddad, for helping my family through their life. And it ain't much, but I just want to give you a gift. And he had a five dollar tag on him. See, look at you. See, look at you. All y'all ain't clapping, or, or if you're clapping, the reason why you ain't clapping, because he showed you out, because y'all got more money he got, y'all got jobs, and he took the time to reach back and say, Pastor, I appreciate you, granddad. I told, I told him too. I was talking to God. And I said, God, this is why I preach like this. It's because these young children in here, if, you don't, if I don't preach like this, if my soul saving message don't be like this, when they go to school, y'all ain't tell them about dykes and sisters. Y'all ain't tell them about a fornication. Y'all ain't tell them about pedophile. Y'all just send them to school. Y'all can't pray on them because your life ain't right. And that's why I stay on them and then y'all get mad because I'm telling your children what you won't tell them. They call me granddad. And I ain't talking about no, well, I ain't the biology. I don't, we ain't talking about no biology. I'm their spiritual dad, granddaddy did. Yes, then y'all parents got a nerve to be mad because I'm preaching to them like that. This is what it said. This is a soul saving church. This is what he said. He come back and said, is there another gospel? No. These are the message y'all heard. He told you there ain't no another gospel. Stop letting these people think you can go to heaven and sing. But y'all get mad with me. Go and listen to uh, 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 Joy Miles and T.D. Jakes and all these people. Act like y'all really got something from the Lord. Man, they said T.D. Jakes was pressing, preaching about you going to get a camera. It ain't fool hollering about a camel because see on a camel in, 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 in the dry country, the desert, a camel was like a roll roar. <laughs> but in 2022, y'all gonna get a camel. Where you gonna live at? And I'd like to see you, I'd like to see one of y'all fool riding down with a big old camel in New York. In Atlanta, in Texas. You see how they play with y'all because that was a camel wall. Now they come back and tell you, you're going to get a camel. And you dumb and so up there hollering that you're going to get a camel when a camel ain't no, well, don't have no value in the United States unless you're going to send them to a zoo. But because T.D. Jake said it, it's annoying. Well, he had that anointing, he should have put some anointing over his son from being a sister. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, I said it. Y'all want to talk about, yeah, he harsh. He just, you know what I'm saying? He should have said that. Yes, I should have. 
If he gonna tell y'all y'all gonna get a camel, that's my job. That's what an apostle job is. It's to put the church back in order. And I tell my wife, I don't know how a lot of people gonna be an apostle when they don't go nowhere, they don't watch nothing. So how they gonna change the world? You can't be no apostle just only preaching in your church and ain't watching all this stuff. I know what's going on. This is what it said. The other side of God. See, some of, some of the way they move none of y'all. And, and not that I'm trying to move you, but see, you know a lot of this you ain't done. But that would make it a, a soul-saving mission because you ain't going to let it change your soul. My preaching. Hmm. I change your soul. And the only reason why I don't change your soul, you love you. This is what it said. He, he, boy, boy, God is so, so, he's so awesome. He said, the other side of God. When everybody's talking about the promise of God, TDJ won't tell you about the wrath of God. And I told him, I said, when I first came in the church, Every church that was fellowshipping with Church of Living God was preaching holiness. Yeah, I'm going to tell. Yeah, I'm going to tell. And as soon as I started preaching and God started showing me stuff, and then I look back at them now, ain't none of them preaching holiness. They don't talk about hell. They don't talk about sin. We trying to change the gospel around to fit people that they don't get offended. What I, got, what I care about somebody getting offended for when God don't told me Hell is real. And I have one question. I have one question. How can y'all tell people they going to heaven and won't tell them they won't go to hell? How can y'all preach that they're going to go to heaven and get a glorified body? Well, when they don't go to heaven, what do they go to? What does it say? He come back and said, the time is now. Paradise time, troubles in time. And we got troubles in time too because in her, we don't want to be with God. We sit right in here and most of y'all appetite is ready to eat. I don't care about what I'm preaching, um, but I'm all right with it. I'm going to help send you to hell because as long as you, he said, he said, the day that you hear my voice, he said, the day that you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. So you can harden your heart if you want to, but God said, I'm, 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 I'm going to straighten that. This is what he said. He said, brother, my heart desire and prayer to God is for Cornerstone, for Pensacola, for the surrounding area, for the world, that they might be saved. That's why I preach like this. That's why I preach like this. That's why my, my preaching is a soul-saving message. Y'all ain't heard me yet. Everybody listen to the message. Have you ever heard me beg for money? That tell you it's from God. And not like we got all the money, like not like we running over in the bank, but that's not what God wants. He don't want the bank to be full. He wants his heaven to be full. He wants heaven to be full. He don't want hell. And that's what I tell you all the time. Hell is enlarging itself. For who? But heaven, you ain't read nothing about enlarging. He know what he'll make. He was a great architect. This is what he said. He come back and said, a vessel of honor. He's standing all by himself. See, that's why I'm a vessel of honor. That's why people don't want me around. They want me to stay alone. But you know what get me, though? Everybody is having church, and you got lit churches, new churches, this church, that kind of church, that kind of church, and don't nobody want a fellowship with a vessel of honor. Something wrong with that. You got three members, and you don't want a fellowship with us. What's the reason why? What's the reason why? Why everybody one time when I first started church, I would get invited everywhere. Now I don't get invited nowhere. You know why? Ask me why, Jeff. Because I'm clean. You can't find nothing. You can't find nothing dirty with something ain't dirty. But if I come in your church and I preach the truth, they're going to want to know why you ain't preaching that. 
And you know what I like about it? It ain't like I got to speak in tongues because most times there's no interpreter. So I speak the truth from the Bible. You don't need an interpreter. This is what he said. Listen what he said. He said, he said, he said, brother, my heart desire and prayer to God for Cornerstone, the world, the surrounding area, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they all go to church and have a zeal of God, but not according to his word. See, that what everybody lead him. Everybody lead him is scholars in the word right now. When they get to talking, people say, oh, man, they got this thing down, boy. Boy, they, they know something. But they won't tell them, you got, I got that from Apostle Simmer. I got that from Cornerstone, the Bundle Light Church. Tell the truth. Tell, tell where the, the preacher came from. Tell where the knowledge came from. There ain't nothing to be afraid of. I came from Apostle Fred L. Williams. Hey, listen. I did. He preached sound doctrine to me and gave me a solid foundation. Now, I don't go there no more. I got my own church. But I ain't afraid to say where I got it from. But the anointing that I got, he couldn't give me that. This is what he said. He said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not a conjure knowledge. For they're being ignorant of God righteous. Ain't none of y'all ignorant. The people left him, other people here, ain't none of us in. It's a chart that we make. So when God send you to hell, it's, it's just off a of GP, baby. You gonna burn, cause it, the worst thing gonna be burning hell for us is knowledge. So that means you just in your other fact that you wanna live in where you wanna live. I wouldn't be in church. I, I mean, I'm not no church like this. I go to me one of them old throwback churches. And just go in there and just live in there. I just call, they're they going to talk about Shadrach and the Meshach and the, ooh, Benigo. I heard somebody say it one the other day. I heard a preacher, preacher, he talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and the nigga go, nigga go something. And I said, now ain't that something? It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. When he go to the fire, Jesus ain't going to be in there. Now you can play with it wherever you want to. This is what it said. He said, that's an honor. Stand alone. Y'all heard that, didn't you? Listen to what he said right here in Isaiah 55 and 11. This is why I'm talking about a soul saving message. He said, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me ball. So if I do what God said and preach a soul saving message, and your soul don't change, he said, it won't come back void. So if I preach the truth every time I come in here, Huh? He said they're going to come back forward. So it got to come to what I told y'all. My preaching. I'm trying to say his soul. This is what he said. God already know. He said, so shall my word that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accompany that which I please. And it shall prosper. In the thing where I sin it. Ooh, but that's powerful. But listen to what God said about that. Y'all want me to tell you? You want me to tell you what he said about that, y'all? What I see, God judgment is coming on the world now. Did none of y'all change by that? Now, all the other messages y'all ain't changed by. But now he said the judgment coming. So that means any day, and y'all still ain't got your soul and spirit right. Y'all still dragging around in here. How many of y'all became soul? How many of y'all became the light of the world? I'm talking about the preaching of the gospel. And we know there is no other gospel, so if you ain't became the salt of the earth or the light, then you, you got to be walking in darkness. Every time I turn around, he putting them vessels up there. I was called by God, not by you. <laughs> And you ain't gave me nail check. That's what he said. He said, what I see. This is what God told me to tell y'all. What I see, because y'all ain't seeing. God judgment is coming on the world. That's for everybody. That's why God got me preaching like this. Just in case they don't never come in. That's why I tell y'all to share the message. All they got to do is read the title. They ain't even got to watch the message. The title alone make y'all sit. Why you think y'all don't go back and watch it? 
I don't know how many times I don't watch Bruce Lee movie. But every time, they, every time they come on, I sit straight up in the bed. Ain't nothing on Bruce Lee movie chain. But it's like, ah! I said, go on, Bruce Lee. I love seeing them do that. I love seeing it. I just watch it. But y'all don't love seeing these words. Y'all don't love going back to watch them. I guess I ain't doing nothing. I remember I need to do that on one of my messages. That's our problem. We want to be entertained. She was moaning about my family to watch my mess. And then I got some of them in my family for to be saved. Supposed to be. But how do you not watch this when I'm preaching truth? Then y'all got all them hot scot sisters in y'all church. She don't tell me. This is what God said. Listen to what God said. He said, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge you. He's talking about all this. He said, my message that I got, them soul saying, man, it's going to judge you. And everybody's talking about, you can't judge me. Well, God told me if I judge myself, you can't judge me. So that means, so if I preach the word to you, you ought to be judging your own self. My preaching will save your soul. My preaching will change your walk, will change your talk. The only way it don't change it, you don't want to change so you know that tell me the choir y'all don't want to change. Y'all go back there and meet. Y'all begin y'all kind of revelation. And y'all bring y'all self, stink yourself right out here and do just what he done told y'all not to do. And then you, then you can't see God because then when I speak, he, y'all say he just be on told y'all that. So y'all got to know there's one spirit. I ain't talked to him. And then y'all still don't change. Y'all look at the center. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge you. That's why God says the soul saving church. Then he said, Justin. For Jesus. It was in the 38 Smith and West. It going to judge you. I know y'all saying Jesus ain't here. But he was the word, still is the word. And God said, by the word, man shall live by. Yeah. Ain't gonna judge y'all. Y'all think y'all is him. Y'all the one that really gonna judge. And y'all know what's so powerful about it? We ain't asked none of y'all to judge. This is what he said. He said, justice for Jesus will be. And like y'all can say and by this, I'm the Department of Justice. My office is in uh, 23 North A, always in the back of the building. That's where my office is at. He said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal for God. You know how people always going to quote scripture, but not according to the knowledge. For they being ignorant of God righteousness. Going by to establish their own righteousness, but have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And most of us in here haven't submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Y'all think I wrote this. Y'all think this is my word. I'm just a uh, deliverer. In other words, the notary. And you ain't got to come ask and pay me to, not to notarize your paper. Because justice for Jesus is going to be served. Whether you want to be served or not, trust me, your subpoena is on your door. I promise you, you can't even be able to get away with it. He come back and said, Pastor Simmer, who hell for everyone that disobeyed them 66 books of the Bible? Everyone. Have y'all disobeyed? Have y'all did not? Have y'all been not doing what y'all been preached to? The truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Now we want first truth is a mercy. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. If you love me. So where y'all at? And we know. Let me just help y'all. 
Give Jesus a chance. Give him a chance. Look what he said. He's talking to us. He want us God wants us to know these things. And we, don't, we still is frustrated and bothered with God. Then he say, have not submitted themselves unto the rights of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. But Pastor C, you don't understand. Then he started talking about, God started showing me in Isaiah how Lucifer wanted to make his own king. He wanted to establish his own righteousness. And all he had was a thought, and God cast him out. Now listen to what God said now. I will die in my ish. And we sit right in the church, got issues. I'm going to tell you, somebody speaking my life, they speak truth, everything they said from then on. But when you, when you live in the flesh, the flesh tell you, man, I ain't studying that, man. That's what Paul's talking about. Man, I ain't studying that. I told him when uh, it wasn't long ago, I was telling him to tell my supposed to be a uh, son, TC, that God ain't going to play when he show up. But in somewhere in our mind, we don't know how he's going to show up. Because I said, it ain't going to be like you think. And you don't have no control over He said, look in the mirror. Y'all just heard this. Which one of y'all look? Hey! Come to the song. Hey! Did you look at that word and see where you ain't right with it? Or did we leave him saying, that's just another preach word? Man, I'm going to do what I want to do, man. I don't care what apostle says. Apostle can say what he want to say. When I get ready to do me, I'm going to do me. This is what God said. He said in Matthew 11 and 28, he said, come unto me. You say, hey, big? He, he said, come unto me, all ye that are labor in a heavy laden, mean weighted down. He said, come. He has, he has every preach word, that's what he's telling y'all to do. Come. And ain't none of y'all came yet. This is what he said. He said, and I will give you rest. And a lot of times we talk about, man, you know, I'm going through so much. You call this person, you call that person. You call everybody, tell them how much you go to. But as a song said, call him up, call him up, tell him what you want. Yeah, yeah. On the main line. And we'll call natural people and we'll never say, Jesus, this is apostle. But he hard at me down here. He said, what you want me to do? I say, make it right. He said, now you going back to sleep. It don't take no long conversation. He said, come unto me, all you that uh, 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 labor in a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke. He said, and learn of me. When y'all leave out of here, y'all either leave it in here, or y'all take it with you, and that's it. When you go home, wherever your place is for it, or wherever you put it down that kitchen table, sink, anywhere like that, that way y'all put it. I know y'all don't put it on the ice box. I know y'all gonna say refrigerator. I already know. That's how smart y'all live. Ain't it? That's refrigerator. Pop still say an ice box. Pop still say hell, too. <laughs> how y'all change that? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, they can't do that one right there. This is what he said. He said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. He said, put this thing on you. 
Take it. Most of y'all leave out here with the word, even with your Bible. It won't be upon you. He said upon you. I mean, walk with it, talk with it, everything. Let's be honest. How many of y'all saw? For real, for real. Now, you know, every lie you're going to make it in the lake. You know, every, every lie you, we know we're going. Now, since y'all have heard what God asked for y'all, and I've been preaching to y'all, how many of y'all have came this? I'm talking about for real. I ain't talking about on your thought pattern. Because he said you already go about to establish your own right. Can I see hands? I'm talking about salt. I ain't talking about your salt. I'm talking about the word. See, I'm going to keep telling y'all. I'm going to explain this thing to y'all because I really don't want y'all to lie. It's not your salt. It's his salt. <laughs> One thing my wife told me. When people start folding their arm, they're unconcerned. That means you will be unconcerned to God's word in a dying world already. That's dangerous. That's unconcerned because it ain't that you're comfortable. But I don't mind helping. I'm serious. God told me something. Terry, you got to do it. To the weak became as we, that I might gain the we. I am made all things to all me, that I might by all me save some. In other words, Paul knew one thing, Jack. He wasn't going to save everybody in this church. Jesus knew when he died, everybody wasn't going to accept him. God knew when he sent his son, Jesus, everybody wasn't going to follow him. But you ain't going to have no excuse when he judged you. Is that what he said? My message, my preach word is the soul-saving message. Job 14 and 14 said, if a man, if, if a man die, shall he live again? That's what Job wanted to know. Everybody think life over after you die, but Job said, if I, a man die, shall he live again? All the days of his appointed time will I wait till my chain come. He, Paul, uh, David, Job was saying, I'm going to wait until my chain come. This is what he said. He come back in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. I know the Sunday school, y'all just talked about humble. Let me tell you something I believe humble is. How can you be humble and don't be holy? Huh? So if you if you ain't if you ain't became holy, you ain't gonna become humble. Some of y'all had like y'all lip singing or something. This is what he said, this is what he said. He said, he said. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. He said, pray. We already know St. John uh, uh, 9 and 31. said, God don't hear a sinner prayer. So if you dirty and you ain't the salt of the earth, you ain't the light, you ain't holy, you ain't born again. Only thing you can pray is, God, I'm sorry for how I'm living in sin. Come into my life and change me. My preaching is not a kissing cousin. It's not sugar, not sweet. It's, not, it's, it's nourishing to your body. But it's not good for your flesh. It's, it's a killer to your flesh. This is what he said. This is what he said. He said, he said seek in my faith and turn from the wicked way. How many of y'all don't turn from your wicked way? We got churches full of wickedness. And we sit right in here and act like it. I'm going to die of my issue. And we act like we ain't got no issue. You got to love everybody. And we sit right in here like we love everybody. That's the issue. Walking in darkness, and we walk in darkness. We act like we ain't got no issue. That's what he said. He said, and turn from the wicked way. He said, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. Not until then. And a lot of y'all sitting here, and y'all hear this word, and then y'all want to apply to humble yourself. Y'all want to apply to get right with God and then y'all try to play with God amiss 
And then when it don't happen, you mad with God. Say, so I just prayed for that. But he just told you, you got to be right. He said, you got to turn your wicked, wicked way. He said, then what I hear, that means every wicked way you got, when you know it, you got to get rid of it. Then it said, Luke uh, 5 and 32 said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinner to repent. He said, I ain't, I ain't come to bother the righteous. He said, I can't even deal with them some. This is what he said right here in Acts 3 and 19. He said, repent ye doubtful and be converted. Sure, I'm still the same person. What changed about you? What changed about you? He said that your sin may be blotted out. That means, he said, converted. That means you changed. And we're, we're in the church trying to preach like everybody on the same chain and ain't nobody converted. They ain't born again. They don't have the Holy Ghost. And I ain't, I ain't still being born again. I ain't seen that in the scripture nowhere. That I'm still being born again. No, I ain't going with that. He said, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. He come back in Matthew 4 and 17. He said, from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. What he saying it for? If we ain't going to convict or convert people, what are they going to repent for? You got to be on told them what's wrong. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My preaching is a soul-saving message. I can look at y'all looking. And then what do God do to every time you come to church? He pull at your soul. He pull at your spirit. And y'all let y'all flesh tell y'all, man, just sit there and listen. It'll be over in a few minutes. You know how possible is. You know, right when he get through, he gonna come in love on everybody. Then he said, look, he, he talking to us. He said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He tell you that. But then he come back in Hebrews 6 and 4, he said, for it is impossible for those who were once in life, once heard this word, once knew what they should have got rid of. He said, and, and have tasted, and have, have tasted the heavenly gift, and were made partaker of the Holy Ghost, but still choose to live like they want to live. People in the world today have their own thoughts, even though God got his thought. People don't want to do what the Bible say. They don't want to do it. They got their own mind. What about you? But well, God want to know what about you? You know, so many times we are looking at stuff the wrong way. He said in Acts 16, 31, he said, And they say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thou house. So if I submit, I can, I can bless my whole house. And a lot of y'all in here won't submit. Pure is what God wants. Righteousness is what God wants. God wants us to be able to shine where we go. And that's why I'm glad that I'm the salt of the earth, that preachers that ain't salty and don't lost their Savior don't want to deal with me. I'm a light wherever I go because I go and God sent me to shine in a dark place. You tell me why. If I preach the gospel like that and I live there, why don't no preachers, apostles, bishops, or nobody want to deal with me? It ain't like I got no stove front where you said he ain't big enough for me or he ain't got a nice facility. That ain't the excuse. You can't talk about the profession of our YouTube, our Facebook. You can't talk about that. So what it is that separates us is the truth. It's that soul-saving message. And a lot of y'all, it's just like a lot of the rest of them. Some of y'all got in y'all mind to get away. You're just waiting on the moment. You're waiting on something that click you, that make you look at the ministry different. I am saved by faith in the word of God. What you saved by? Neither that salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
Y'all can, y'all can call Jesus whatever y'all want to. This is what it said in Mark 16 and 16. He said, he that believe and baptized shall be saved, but he that believe it not shall be damned. So what part was he telling you that you believe not? He ain't put no stipulation on that. Some of you said, oh, I believe something. He said, when you don't believe, you're going to be damned. So what part you don't believe? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man can come to the Father without him. Brother, my heart desire for Pensacola, for the surrounding area, for Cornerstone, for every church in the world, for every mission group, is to be saved. Paul wanted Israel saved. We got too many people go to church. We got too many people preach. We got too many people do that. Why worry about what your position or what, 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 what position you hold in the church and you ain't saved? What good that is? So God summon up. I love him, y'all. Because in spite of what anybody think about me, he said, you are the salt of the earth, Apostle Simmer. But if your soul had lost its saving, where shall it be salted? Huh? It is therefore good for nothing. That's why I said, he'll let you preach. And at the same time, he won't fight you. He said, because he won't have no anointing. That's what he said. He said, but to be cast un- out and to be trodden under the foot of man. You are the light of the world, Apostle Simon, a city that is set on the hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick, and it give light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine, or oh, they can quote that, that they may see your good work and glorify the Father which in heaven. But men love darkness better than light. All my grandbaby sleep. What miles at? He sleep. We gotta know one thing. And that's what we got to do. We got to pray for our children. I'm so afraid for the children. Because when the parents live in a kind of way, they don't have a chance. They don't understand the danger they're in with a parent that's not saved in 2022. That going to do things around them that they're going to hear in church that you shouldn't be doing. And the first thing as parents we tell them, don't do as I do, but do as I say. That ain't going to add up, y'all. I'm speaking to Cornerstone today. I want all y'all to listen to me. This year won't be like last year. That don't mean y'all won't be like y'all were last year. I ain't going to be like that. I'm going to preach what God tell me to preach. But when I see stuff that ain't right, wherever it's at, I'm correcting. And I advise every member here that got the church at heart, we got to stop letting stuff go on that's not right. When our dress code is not up, my wife shouldn't be the only one that has to tell somebody that you shouldn't wear that. Unless you ain't the salt of the earth. Unless you ain't the light of the world. Unless you're more concerned about what somebody going to say than what God going to say. We ain't playing this anymore. Choir, either y'all gonna get it right or y'all ain't gonna be saved. That's just as simple as that. We can't do that no more. We don't deal with that ever since the choir has started. And then I'm finding out that most of y'all ain't even concerned about your life with God. We can't do that. We can't do it no more. Because when people start coming here 
that, that desire to be saved, we'll kill them. We'll kill them. This is what it says I close. In Matthew 21 and 32, it said, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you shall believe not. You shall believe him not. But the public and the hollering believe him. Now, ain't that something? The people out of the street believe who Apostle Simon was. But it came to y'all, and y'all believe not. He said, you, when he has sent, seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. 2 Corinthians 7 and 10 said, for godless sorrow, work of repentance. Even what I don't tell y'all today, a lot of y'all ain't godless sorrow. A lot of y'all ain't move. A lot of y'all ain't do nothing. Because you're not concerned about your soul. You're not concerned about your spirit. You, sir, you're concerned about your identity. But God said, when, I, when you get before me, it ain't going to be with this thing. For God is sorrow, work of repentance to salvation. Not to be repentant of. But the sorrow of the world bring forth death. Yeah. See, a lot of y'all will stay in the world and keep doing what y'all are doing. And don't have no sorrow for it. Don't care what apostle preach. And y'all good. But the sorrow of the world will bring forth death. And that's why he said perilous time is troublesome time right now. And y'all didn't even look when I told y'all watch your surroundings. Y'all going about y'all in merry way. Eating, drinking, being married, smoking, homung and lying, Facebooking. Twitter, DM and all that, and y'all fire. And God say now, or y'all never DM me and want to be alone with me. Why y'all ain't why y'all ain't ask for a private conversation with me? But I'm gonna enjoy preaching to y'all. For God be the glory. And what he has said, I ain't asking it if it accomplished. And you can sit here in your flesh and be mad. God, you handle that because I only did what you told me to do. Show yourself to your people. Show yourself to the rebellious people. Show yourself like you did back there with Moses. Show yourself, God, because they don't think you the same today and yesterday and today or forevermore. They don't think you is. Show yourself, God, to every member that don't bid him, him, and don't left him. Show yourself that I preach a soul-saving message. God, bless your name.